self-control is strength. Calmness is mastery. You have to get to a point where your mood doesn't shift based on the insignificant actions of someone else. Don't allow others to control the direction of your life. Don't allow your emotions to overpower your intelligence. Morgan Freeman Feelings are much like waves. We can't stop them from coming but we can choose which one to surf. Jonathan Martinson In a message filled with timeless wisdom, E2 Jesus Sananda illuminates the profound power of self-awareness and emotional mastery. Speaking from the divine light of Creator God, Sananda reveals that true control over one's destiny is achieved by owning and understanding one's feelings. He teaches that embracing our emotions allows us to break free from the cycles of karmic repetition, propelling us forward toward a higher state of consciousness. This transformative journey fosters not only personal growth but also the collective evolution of all beings. Sananda's message shines as an inspiration of hope and guidance, offering a clear path forward for those who seek to navigate the complexities of life with love and integrity. Own your feelings and you will control your destiny. Isu Jesus Sananda Thursday, the 8th of August, 2002 Good evening, my scribe, and thank you for responding to my call. I am Isu Emmanuel Sananda, more commonly referred to as Jesus on your world. I come in the light of Creator God, the One Light. May you each feel my presence within you as you partake of this offering. We of the lighted realms of creation work, diligently to help ones like yourself grow in awareness and understanding, of the true nature and potential of your being. To do so is to liberate ones from the karmic wheel of repetition into a more advanced state of consciousness, where an even greater growth is possible. We find great joy in assisting you ones, for as you each move forward in expanding your awareness, we too move forward in our understanding and growth. As many of you are well aware, there is a negative counterpart to the lighted brotherhood. This so-called negative element is comprised of ones who have chosen to follow a path wherein self is placed above all else. These ones have chosen a very solitary and lonely path, as they struggle to achieve their next level of growth. These ones use clever manipulation of others to create the changes they desire. By contrast, the lighted realms provide inspiration to others, when so invited to help create growth in harmony with the will of Creator Source, always honoring everyone's uniqueness and free will choice of self-determination. You who have come into the physical as volunteers to assist we of the higher realms in our combined mission to spread peace, love, and harmony throughout the world, do so by the seemingly small things you do each and every day. The smallest act of kindness, you show to those around you radiates outward like ripples on a pond. These ripples are actually very real and perceivable in the energy space of the spirit realms, from which all physical spaces originate. You build a treasure chest of riches, and richness, in the form of spiritual wealth, every time you send out a wave of genuine kindness, love, and or appreciation. With each such act you are adding to your true wealth, and in a crude sort of way you could say that you are paying for your ticket off the karmic merry-go-round. Through growth and greater awareness of the rules of the game, you will all naturally seek to understand the true nature of the negative emotions that well up within you from time to time. As you grow, you will eventually learn for yourself that all such negativity comes from your own past indiscretions. These indiscretions all have roots in choices and decisions you have made wherein you were not true to the nature of your higher self's purpose. If you enter the physical realm to help others, and in a moment of selfishness you contradict this intent in the smallest of ways, 
you will send out a ripple in energy space that reflects this sort of indiscretion. Let's say that you got angry and lashed out at a friend in a moment of overwhelm. The pulse wave of energy goes out and is reflected back to you, and more similar occasions begin to manifest around you as the problem grows. A vicious cycle is created that only truly stops when one truly sees and accepts responsibility for having created the lesson in the first place. Only at this point of higher perceptual awareness can one fully appreciate the value of the lesson, and thus growth is achieved and forgiveness of self is fully granted. Others are never the cause of your inner emotional states of feeling. However, others can influence your emotional state just as you can influence theirs. To the extent you allow others to influence your emotional state, you are left vulnerable, but so too are you left open for great potentials of joy, love, and happiness. If your purpose is to help others, this implies interactions with others, and thus a certain necessary amount of openness in order to share with them the gifts of kindness and joy you bring into the physical realm. It can be painful when ones you deeply love reject you. But you do not have to allow their perceptions of you to affect you in a negative way. Just remember that you must allow for others free will choices, and honor their uniqueness, else you will surely contradict a very fundamental goal of your own purpose, to add positive and loving energy into your world. If you allow such rejections to linger within you, there is created an energy link to that person, or persons, that becomes like a shackle that binds you to them, wherein you quite literally force yourself to relive the pain of rejection over and over. For many, this sort of self-imposed punishment is created as a means to somehow prove the love for the other. In actuality, you are creating an unnecessary karmic tie to this other or person that will play out again and again with similar outcomes, until you learn that you cannot honor another by punishing yourself. Punishing yourself to honor another could be viewed as a form of worship and manipulation of the other whom you are attempting to honor. You are, in essence, adding negativity, in energy space, to this other person's life by holding grief in your heart while thinking of them. The extent to which this actually affects the other individual is entirely up to them, and their willingness to accept the energy you are sending out. Please know that the interconnectedness of all ones is a fact. The affinity and love for others is natural and quite unavoidable from a much larger perspective. While in the physical, you perceive a separation from one another, and this is for very good reason. It makes for very dynamic challenges as well as spontaneous interactions. If you have ever felt the thrilling sensation of being truly surprised, then you should see that this sensation would not be possible, if it were not for the perception of individuality. However, from the non-physical perspective, sensations of surprise are contrived at best. Thus, by choosing to enter into, stepping onto, the physical playing field and accepting the conditions, rules of the game, you are creating opportunities to experience unique sensations with vivid clarity and profound intensity. One of the rules to which you agreed, prior to entering the physical game, was in essence that you would not wreck the game for any other of the many participants. In essence this means that you would balance out all the energy flows you created. This includes any damage you may have done to yourself. In short, you must learn to heal your own wounds as well as assist others to do likewise. A learned practitioner of self-healing will come to understand that the quickest and most direct way to heal yourself is to help others to heal from their past indiscretions. This means that, by helping to spread positive energy of light and love, you will generate a dynamic condition that attracts to you the very conditions or ingredients you need in order for you to create your own healing, and thus balance any indiscretions and end the cycle of karmic repetition.
Some of those experiencing among you have achieved this state of awareness, and still choose to enter back into the physical game, so as to further assist those whom they cherish deeply, knowing full well that they could potentially become ensnared, in the whole karmic cycle all over again. These ones are great powerhouses of positive energy. They generally reach out to the masses because their energy and desire is to awaken the many, not just one or two close friends. These are the great teachers who often bring with them extra gifts, such as strong intuition, precognition, clairvoyance, clairaudience, and such. These extra tools are allowed because these ones have proven their responsibility to handle same, and thus you have ones who are just born with such abilities. These ones are among the teachers who help to answer the call of the many prayers for guidance. Though many on your world would more easily accept a burning bush to give them the guidance they seek, such is seldom the case. Both messages and messengers come in an infinite variety of forms. Please be mindful that, in the days of Moses of biblical fame, there were no words to describe anything that gave off light other than to call it fire. Lanterns and oil lamps were the only lights used in those times by the indigenous people of the earth. Even the burning bush wasn't really on fire, but rather, the observer's assumption was that it must have been fire, for what else could have been the source for such light? Dear ones, learn to perceive with the heart first and only then try to assign meaning to the external. The inner reality is the more important one. Pay very close attention to what you are feeling. Own your feelings. Do not assign blame to another for your anger. Taking this one simple step will cause a great shift in the energy flows to and from you, and will result in your anger dissipating and giving way to an accepting of the much more pleasant emotional states. This is also a very important step to take in healing any and all physical ailments. The emotions of the inner world cause energy pulses, that influence the dynamic interchange between all the layers of energy bodies, that keep the physical body functioning properly. Excessive or chronic negative emotional states, such as anger, grief, depression, fear, and such, are always part of the root cause of various systems of the body malfunctioning prematurely. Usually ones who have a predisposition to anger also enter quickly into a state of depression, as the resulting guilt compounds their situation. These ones are prime candidates for cancer and heart attacks. As you look around you, and you witness what seems to be chaos and turmoil boiling over at every turn, please know that this too is part of a much larger cycle of karmic rebalancing, and that you do not have to accept the negativity associated with all of it. For most of you, your greatest challenges will come when you may be faced with having to live without your modern conveniences for a while, such as electricity for your appliances and gasoline for your vehicles. But if you are truly honest with yourself, and can see that a simpler life does not necessarily equate to suffering, then you will be much better situated to handle the so-called harshness that some perceive to be inevitable. Whether your glass is half full or half empty is all in how you look at it. There is always something to be thankful for in your life. No matter what your current situation, you can make the best of it. Simply saying please and thank you gives an acknowledgement to the recipient that they have value, and that their service is not being taken for granted. Is it so hard? Never underestimate the power of the little kindnesses that are simple to express and share. A smile goes a long way, much further than any of you ever realize. Choose to be the spark that ignites the fire of positivity, appreciation, and love in others. Choose the liberating path of kindness and love that helps you to help yourself, as well as others, to get out of the karmic rut of repetition and off the karmic merry-go-round, and thus find newness of expression.
I am Isu Jesus Sananda. Come in answer to the general question of what can I do to help. May the message herein give you the insight you seek. I come in the light and love of Creator God, the One Light, so that you might better find your way. Blessings and love to you all. Salu. Source, The Spectrum, News Review, September 2002, Volume 4, Number 3, Pages 70-71. to Editor's Note, To all my listeners and viewers, please check out the description section of this video for the above source, reference links and further comments. From there you will also have access to the banned Phoenix journals by the US government along with the starting set of Phoenix journals, as recommended by Commander Hatton to read first. The journals help unravel and clarify the many lies, tamperings, and misconceptions foisted upon the masses by those who seek to control the thoughts, perceptions and actions of others from generation to generation especially those of the true Christed life teachings of Isu Emmanuel Jesus Sananda. For uninformed readers, the new name and title of Sananda is an earned level of utmost respect and achievement for the accomplished and highly revered master teacher, meaning one with God. As a matter of fact, even your mistranslated and tampered with Bibles mentions that he would have a new name upon his return. The Phoenix Journals are the word of truth given forth to mankind from the higher realms of light, during this most critical transition time upon Earth's evolution to a higher dimension. Please like, share and subscribe to help support my YouTube channel, and as always have a wonderful day. In love and light. Thank you.